for Nyota because James has very much so enjoyed using a water spout, Origin Pulse, Dazzling Gleam, just trying to get that spread damage out over onto the opposing side of the field. And here we go now. Both players have made their team selections, and now we are getting ready to start game one here of the top four. Give it up for both James Beck and Nyota Mizubichi. All right, let's Here see what both we players go, Aaron. <laughs> Xerneas and Incineroar leads on James' side, so the classic fake out Geomancy possibility here over on James' side as Nyota leads with Lunala and Salamence. So definitely a pretty free opportunity, I'd say, to just fake out the Salamence and maybe set up a Geomancy on Xerneas' end, but not necessarily something you want to do when Lunala is a Pokemon that, of course, gets access to Roar, gets access to Psyka, uh, gets access to Trick Room, so doesn't necessarily mean you can just kind of run away with Xerneas uh, this early on in the game. But of course, Nyota going for something that can potentially counter uh, the early Xerneas lead. Salamence definitely in kind of an awkward spot right now, though. Can't really do too much damage to either of these Pokemon, and it will just fall to an attack from Xerneas. Even before it's uh, Geomancy, the Moonblast might just knock it out. So I think Salamence is going to want to pivot out here. That's exactly what happened. Nyota switches out that Salamence. Stack attack and takes the field. What a better answer to that Xerneas on James' side than a stack attack as Xerneas not off for a Geomancer here, just trying to spread some damage. Uses Dazzling Gleam, breaks Lunala's Shadow Shield here as Incineroar just uses his turn to go for a U-turn. Hitting in that stack attack and allowing James to save that Incineroar for a little later on, but Lunala here, free to set up a possible Trick Room. Yeah, definitely possibility of a Trick Room. Amoongus could come in right now if James decided to bring that and he predicts the Trick Room to come up. Otherwise, he has so many options and there actually is the Amoongus. So yeah, kind of covering for the Trick Room option. Let's see if Trick Room goes up. Yeah. So a great play right there from James and one of the wonders of U-Turn really, just trying to react to what your opponent's gonna do. Saw that the Trick Room was coming and decided to switch in Amoongus. So now, well, Amoongus is ready to just Rage Powder away any Gerable or even go for some Spores. Yeah, if there is no Tapu Fini in the back for Nyoto, it will be really, really tough to kind of deal with this Amoongus, which can kind of just Spore everything under the Trick Room. So I expect to see a Tapu Fini switch in here if he has it. If not, then he's got to be comfortable with just having something fall asleep and distribute damage across the board. Xerneas switches out, though. Incineroar takes the field, and this is going to be a big Intimidate on that Stack Attack, trying to mitigate the amount of damage that it can do. Uh, so, no. No switches, I believe, over on Nyota's side, and it looks like it's just going to be a Z move oh. here. It is going to be... <laughs> the Rock yeah, Z, who's that going, going into? Rush. So this stack attack at Intimidate, though, it is still going to be crushing something under this gigantic rock here as stack attack reveals its item and its strength. This big continental crush now oh. is going to crush this Amoongus, but that Intimidate was probably going to pay huge dividends to allow this Amoongus to uh, survive. Oh! oh! Hangs on with a focus dash though. <laughs> so that critical hit Z move there, just bypassing that intimidate. But again, that focus dash so important. And now this Amoongus is able to put that Lunala to sleep with that spore. Oh man, a critical hit pretty much ensuring that it was going to do maximum damage there and bringing the Amoongus down to its item, which reveals itself to be the focus dash. Incineroar switching is nice. Obviously, you get the Intimidate off against Stack Attack. Dark type attacks are quite good against Lunala, but James takes a lot of damage there. and. I think if Amoongus goes down, it's incredibly difficult for him to deal with this Trick Room matchup, so want to take advantage of the Regenerator by switching out here, and Senra will be able to get a free Bake Out off, presumably into the Stack Attack, uh, but of course you do risk Lunala potentially waking up. That being said, can't do too much other than maybe go for a Moongeist Beam or a Psy Shock into Lazernia slot. Yeah, so Stack Attack there, protecting himself, does not want to take a Bake Out and a Spore in that Whoa. slot. Senra just uses U-Turn here, though. Gonna hit into that Lunala again, more chip damage, and allows James to pivot out that Incineroar possibly back into that Amoongus if he wants to go for another spore the next turn. Yeah, nice read there, expecting the stack attack to not attack there, and gets a great, like you said, pivot into the Amoongus. Lunala does stay asleep for a second turn as well, so James being able to recover a lot of health through that Regenerator. Now that stack attack is intimidated and no longer has its Z-move, it won't be able to do as much damage. Of course, James could always protect here with the Xerneas or even pivot back out into Incineroar to get yet another Intimidate off. The key thing here is that James does need to start getting some damage off across the board, but his goal probably is to just stall out Trick Room and then try to sweep with Xerneas or Kyogre in the back. Yeah, and Amoongus switches out as well, continuing to regain that health with that Regenerate ability. Incineroar comes right back in, another Intimidate on that Stack Attack. So, uh, you know, this Stack Attack is not going to be doing that much damage at all. Two turns of Trick Room remain here as Stack Attack is... Oh, Stone Ed! Connects right, with hit the Incineroar. Big damage, no critical hit there. But it does do big damage as Lunala wakes up and goes for a Moon Geist Beam here. 
using it, gonna try to get some damage out over onto James' side, and now to try and take as much advantage of this trick room as possible. Lands into that incinero slot, just chips away at it as Zernius is <laughs> oh. over at Geomancy. So after this trick room expires, this Zernius is gonna be set up. Yeah, not every day that you see a Xerneas just Geomancy under Trick Room, but I think that's what makes James such a good player. He knows when to best Trick Room or best Geomancy with the Xerneas. And really, really nice call there. I think a play that's actually relatively safe because Amoongus there, uh, you know, threatens with the Rage Powder anyway, so Naoto trying to get the best thing, get as much damage off as possible, but now it's going to out. There's a fake out pressure. You can protect the Xerneas to basically guarantee that it will survive this turn. You can also now switch back out into Amoongus as a potential as well to eat up some attacks. So no Stone Edge crit there means that Incineroar uh, hangs around, means that he can't go for a fake out here. Uh, Xerneas now is boosted, and that is a really, really big deal, especially because Zakataka now is at minus two attack, and without the Z move, probably won't be able to knock out the Xerneas with the Gyro Ball unless it gets a critical hit. Yeah, and of course, the Xerneas can also just protect this turn in order to stall out the rest of this Trick Room in order to just have that speed advantage. Of course, now James needs to find a way to get that Amoongus back in easy enough, and Cinder can just go for another U-turn and switch right back out to provide that Xerneas Amoongus duo that he really enjoys using. Back attack. Uh, starting this off with a protect does not want to take any damage. Just a double protect here to potentially follow his own last turn of trip. Yeah, so Lunala follows suit with a protect of its own as Incineroar uses fake out here. So that fake out pressure in that stack attack as Xerneas goes on the offensive here, uses Moonblast, targets down that stack attack as slot. So the Twisted Dimension finally returned to normal. So yeah, it's really calling out his own trick room and really just trying to bypass that fake out support. Yeah, prioritizing the knockout onto stack attack. I mean, plus two Moonblast isn't getting the KO there, but it's going to do a lot of damage enough where maybe you're in a Dazzling Gleam KO range or certainly another Moonblast. Then stack attack up by far the bigger threat in this game because of how well it damages Xerneas. Obviously, uh, Salamence and Lunala are not as high threats. Xerneas being able to just one-shot the Salamence with a Dazzling Gleam or a Moonblast. And Lunala, of course, now has its Shadow Shield broken and its attacks are all special. So Xerneas with that special defense boost doesn't really mind it so flat. So, yeah, really nice job on James's end to stall out the Trick Room. The key thing here is that he might actually have to stare down another Trick Room here. Both Stack Attack and Lunala have access to Trick Room. Uh, Stack Attack is switching out here, though. If James calls this and just goes for the knockout to Lunala, that could be absolutely huge. Groudon switches in, using that red orb will revert to its primal form here. So, Groudon does have a decent matchup against that Xerneas, but once the Xerneas is boosted, those Moonblasts are going to deal so much damage to that Groudon anyway, so is it going to be able to survive two Moon Glasses? Moon Glass, or... That's, it's, it's a tough spot if Lunala gets knocked out. You're absolutely right here, Aaron. Xerneas uses Moon Glass now, targets down that Lunala. Oh, it's big enough. damage on that Lunala, and Lunala cannot hang on and gets knocked out. Yeah, excellent play there from James. Relatively safe as well, right? Both Pokemon went for the Protect last turn, so you're pretty much guaranteed a free Moonblast into either Pokemon. Obviously prioritizing Lunala because that will get knocked out immediately, whereas Stack Attack will probably hang on even from the plus two Moonblast. So trying to switch out the Stack Attack to reset the Intimidate boost or decreases there, but Xerneas getting a free knockout and perfect positioning here as Kyogre comes out. It's really not what Groudon wants to see now. James is exactly what he wants. He's got Xerneas at full health. He's got Kyogre out with full weather control. Sure, you can bring out something like Stack Attack up, but it's going to be really difficult to set up another Trick Room. Excellent, excellent positioning from James, and a great awareness to see how he needs to stall out the Trick Room. Uh, he kind of correctly assessed that Trick Room would come into this match, and no Tapu Fini also made it a little bit harder from Nyoto's end to block any potential spores. Of course, and now Stack Attack takes the field. This is uh, not the best position for Nyota because, well, it looks like an Origin Pulse or a Water Spout will be able to get a double knockout right here. Yeah, the big question is, is there a wide guard here on Stack Attack? Uh, if there is, maybe you go for it, or maybe you just feel that the game is basically lost and you forfeit the game to not reveal that information. I honestly have no idea. I think if there is wide guard, at least you could press his blades. Uh, it depends on whether James's Kyogre has, uh, you know, scald. If it does, then you can just safely target down the ground on. The upside is at least stack attack, of course, is no longer at minus two attack, as Kyogre actually switches out, so perhaps fearing the wide guard. Kyogre switches out, Amoongus takes the field. Amoongus will be able to provide that support, redirecting a possible Gyro Ball as Groudon on Nyota's side switches out as well, and Salamence takes the field, which has a good matchup against that Amoongus, but might not enjoy taking a Dazzling Gleam or a Moonblast right into that switch. Yep, let's see which one's earning a opted for. It is yep, Dazzling, Dazzling Gleam. Gleam right there. Big damage being dealt here on that Salamence, gets the KO. Oh. Does so much damage to that stack attack as well, and it looks like James Beck might have all pieces here to take game one.
Yeah, regardless of what stack attack it goes for, sure you set up Trick Room, but now Amoongus can just pour around. I mean, James played so well with this Amoongus despite that critical hit. A uh, key focus dash allowing it to hang on, and it's actually healed so much HP through Regenerator, being able to pivot it in back and forth and back and forth. Uh, that cycling with Amoongus in, in center or under Trick Room, really, really great play from James. An excellent decision to go for that Geomancy in the second to last turn of Trick Room. Without Tapu Fini here, James able to really just score whatever he wants. Uh, he's got Kyogre waiting in the back to just click anyone water type attack could really steal out this game so multiple ways James can pull out this game really really well played though against Trick Room which is definitely a pretty difficult matchup excellent play with the Moongus and Incineroar especially yeah the stack attack is slower than that Amoongus so it will be moving before uh, that Amoongus in Trick Room so it won't be put to sleep yet stack attack can protect itself here uh, again, just trying to bait out some attacks as Amoongus uses four. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Lands into that crowd onslaught, puts it to sleep. James is just really running circles around Nyoto right now. Just phenomenal play, calling pretty much every turn, it feels like. Uh, superb, superb uh, job by him this game. Yeah, and Xerneas now follows up with a Moonblast into that stack attack slot. So now this Amoongus is free to just Rage Powder away uh, a possible Gyro Ball as Xerneas just targets it down with Moonblast. Yeah, I really don't think there's much Naoto can do here. Maybe click Rock Slide and try to flinch like a billion times. But the thing is, there's still Kyogre <laughs> waiting in the back end. You've lost the Weather War. So I, I really think that this is pretty much a 100% game uh, one for James. Yeah, as Amoongus now does use Rage Powder. Stack Attack uses Stone Edge. Will connect with that Amoongus. No critical hit. Amoongus hangs on again with 14 hit points as Groudon continues to take a very quick nap. Xerneas uses Moonblast, connects with that Stack Attacker and does so much damage. Gets the KO on that Stack Attacker and it is Groudon versus all of James' team. Yeah, with the Kyogre in the back, it's not looking too great here. So I think both players kind of go back to the drawing board. James really brought, I thought, an excellent team composition, exactly what he needed to. And the fact that there was no Tapu Fini made his life a lot easier. Salamence is obviously a great Pokemon, but it can't really do much against the Xerneas that's already set up. And when Amoongus gets Trick Room up, Salamence is more or less useless. You don't get that super effective damage. So James kind of just closing things out here as a formality. Uh, and, you know, to, for Nyoto, good to kind of take some time, think about what his strategy can be going to this next game. He does wake up, though, and gets the Precipice Blades off. Precipice Blades connects with the Incineroar and the Xerneas over on uh, James' side. Does not that much damage thanks to that Intimidate from that Incineroar, so... Uh, and just, and you got to note that down for Nyota, but here comes the Moonblast from the Xerneas over on James' side. Connects with that ground and oh. does so much damage right there. About 60% done to that ground, despite resisting it. So now Nyota has to figure out a way to deal with this Geomancy Xerneas. He has a lot of the pieces that can deal with it, like a stack attack under Trick Room, but somehow James was just able to play the board position so well, weaved in and out of that Trick Room like it was nothing and did not take any damage at all as Moongus could Contend to just go for a support, but this Xerneas will evil, be able to just knock it out with the Moonblast right here. Yeah, so like we were talking about, I mean, Xerneas really the centerpiece to James' team. And so I think uh, Nyoto's really got to go back to the drawing board and look at, okay, how can I deal with the Xerneas? Not just by itself, but its partners. I think Amoongus was a really amazing there is. one there for James, that he played with it perfectly, kind of baiting out all these attacks. Just the threat of Rage Powder was enough to kind of scare Nyoto. So really well played. I think, I mean, Tapu Fini is definitely the most obvious adjustment you can kind of make. Maybe something like using Tapu Fini over the Salamence. So you can at least set up the terrain and you don't get spored. But uh, it's just really tough to break through this Focus Dash Amoongus because it can take a big hit and with Intimidate can just kind of recycle in through Regenerator. So yeah, definitely tough. If Naito wants to go for the Trick Room route again, I definitely think Tapu Fini is an adjustment he should be making. Otherwise, perhaps he considers going more heavy offense and decides to go for like the Tailwind route instead, especially because Tornadus did not come out from James in that last game. Here we are now, James Beck one game away of becoming a world finalist. Nyota now needs to force a game three here. Again, as you mentioned, you know, this Xerneas just kind of did so much damage, was so safe and protected by James' masterful play with board position. And James is already locked in his team. Nyota now still trying to figure out what his best options are. Yeah, it's really quite tough here. I think you could really go with two routes, like I mentioned, either the Trick Room route once again and prioritize Tapu Fini a little bit more, at least to block the spore, so that way you can kind of get some consistent damage off across the board. I mean, if Nyoto kind of makes the right predictions and maybe Z's the Incineroar on the switch in, we saw the Stack Attack go for the Rocky MZ in that last game, didn't target the Incineroar on the switch in, but that's a really tough prediction to make. But if you feel confident, you think you can nail that prediction, uh, being able to remove Incineroar in this game is a huge piece kind of out the way. So definitely can go with either 
either route. The Tailwind route, obviously a little bit riskier, and James can always adjust and maybe bring out his own Tornadus as well. So it always feels kind of scary to be down one game. We'll see which one Nyoto kind of decides to go for, because I think both are certainly viable. And here we are now, jumping into game two. Both players have selected their teams. Does James have the right piece to steal his deal, punch his ticket to the finals tomorrow? Or does Nyota kind of figure out what James is going to do and what his new game plan is to try to force game three here? Lunala and Stack Attack leads for Nyota as James leads with Tornadus and Kyogre. So here we go, Aaron. Yeah, definitely adjustment this time. Tornado is coming out and maybe predicting a potential Tailwind option from Nyota's end. Either way, Tornado has put in a lot of work, obviously, through taunting the opposing Lunala Kyogre right now, putting on a lot of pressure with his water type attacks as well. Uh, of course, anytime you stare down Tornadus and Kyogre, you have to wonder about potential role plays. Means that you can't just necessarily freely switch into a Groudon. If a Groudon came in here and role play went onto Kyogre and Kyogre got a Water Spot or Origin Pulse off, honestly, that might just be the game on turn one. So you have to still be very, very careful from Nyoto's end. Uh, there is the threat of Trick Room right now, obviously, but if you, you can kind of just taunt the Lunala and go for a Water Spot if you want to play it safe, uh, and then maybe role play Water Spot next turn. Uh, but these players have been playing at a very, very high level. So, oh, there is a Wide Guard reveal though. Lunala uses Wide Guard, not the so common stack attack as Lunala will protect it. Oh! So there it is, the role play. James expecting that Groudon to switch in. Uh, so now Kyogre has Prankster as Tornadus has Primordial C, but no Groudon switch as Kyogre uses Water Spots. No effect thanks to that wide guard. Stack Attack can go for this Trick Room here. Does it go for it as Stack Attack just goes for a Gyro Ball instead? Lands in that Tornadus slot. Does good damage oh there. Oh my and goodness! Gets the KO! Wow! That also lists the Primordial C. Yep, yep. So, uh, here's the beast boost, and there's an attacking boost as well. I mean, this stack attack. Oh no, is actually, no. The sorry, Kyogre roleplay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not. It's not skill swap. It's roleplay. Yep, exactly. But it's still, I mean, obviously, a really, really strong turn one there. I think the wide guard review absolutely huge there because that is something that gives James's team a lot of trouble. Kyogre running both water spell, origin pulse. Like those are the two main means of offense, and wide guard obviously bypasses both of those, and so it makes uh, Kyogre's job a lot more difficult. Naito just going for the gyro ball, confident on the attacks that they're. Stack attack, getting the knockdown to Tornadus, doesn't want to risk getting taunted there. Really, really great turn one play there. James kind of gambling a little bit, hoping for the ground on switch in, but Nyoto makes a very, very great play and takes a early lead. Of course, that stack attack uh, now being back at neutral attack, but a Z move here will do a lot of damage to the Amoogus as we saw in that last game. Yeah, so Incineroar takes the field here, will provide fake outs for the next turn. Uh, Lunala forced to switch out here, does not want to possibly do oh, it Oh, next one adjustment again. So there it is, Aaron, that top of Fini setting that Misty terrain that you wanted to see as an adjustment from Nyota preventing Spore from being able to be used on grounded Pokemon, and it's a revolving door of Pokemon here as Nyota switches out the stack attack of for a Groudon, and the way the speeds work right there is in favor of Nyota because that Groudon comes in not intimidated. Yeah, absolutely. Doesn't get intimidated and has it out right now against two Pokemon that don't really like taking Preston's Blades, so... I mean, Nyoto making some really nice adjustments this game, came up with a really clever lead. I think that wide guard being absolutely essential and also making the top of Beanie adjustment, which means these fours now are not going to be effective at all, of course, because of the Misty terrain. So very, very early lead on here from Nyoto. Of course, he'd always switch the top of Beanie back out into Lunala and just start spamming wide guard next to Groudon. Groudon can just click press his blades. And I think he is in a phenomenal position to take this game just two turns in. Yeah, so great. Th those are adaptations have put him in such a great board position right here as Groudon switches out instead, not gonna use Preston's Blades just yet. Saving that for later as Stack Attack it takes the field. Again, non intimidated will be threatening a lot of damage. Nature's Madness from that top of Fini is revealed, being used onto the Amoongus, taking Amoongus down to 50% of its hit points, breaking that Focus Dash as the Incineroar uses U-Turn, hits in that top of Fini, and Kyger is gonna be taking the field right now. Yeah, so Nyoto making a, another great play there, switching out the Groudon, expecting James to bring in the Kyogre this turn. So now what he can do next turn is just pivot out either Pokemon into Groudon and have full weather control. Doesn't even need to go for the Lunala switching for Wide Guard. It feels like there are honestly multiple ways that Nyoto can close this game out. That was just such a big turn one for him, and Wide Guard being on Lunala makes this significantly more difficult. As Amoongus reveals clear smog, super effective damage on that top Lufini. Does decent damage right there from such a low base power attack. No stat changes were changed really since Tapu Fini was currently at neutral. Yeah, so the Groudon switch, and I'd say, is relatively obvious this next turn, especially if uh, the Tapu Fini switching out into Groudon. So perhaps James wants to read into that a little bit, maybe go for like an Ice Beam if he has Grass, not double up into that slot. 
And the issue is, of course, Snack Attack does have its Z move still, so it could just launch a very powerful Z move into Lamungus to get the knockout there. So uh, James is doing his best to position himself around, and I like the Kyogre switching here. He needs to win the Weather War to have a chance of winning this game, so he's basically saying, okay, I'm trying to bait out the Groudon. If I can get my Kyogre out after your Groudon, then I at least have a shot of winning this game. And Top of Fini's uh, attack is dropped by that Incineroar's Intimidate. Not going to matter at all, of course. Stack Attack actually protecting this turn, not wanting to take damage uh, possibly oh. from that Kyogre. So Incineroar dodges the attack right there as Amoongus uses Grass Knot, hits in that Top of Fini, but Top of Fini does not weigh that much as a Pokemon. Yeah, so not doing very much damage. Once again, I really like the play from both sides there. Uh, James trying to prioritize getting out the Kyogre and Nyoto actually not falling into that trap. Staying in with both Pokemon, saying, okay, your Kyogre is not going to be able to do very much damage against my Tapu Fini. Might as well just try to chip anything off with the Nature's Madness. Definitely an unfortunate miss there. Uh, feels like Nyoto still has control of this game, though, and he's actually being very smart about not just bringing Groudon out immediately so that the Kyogre can't just come in and get full weather control against it. Yeah, and Amoongus switches out. Primal Kyogre takes the field for James' side. We'll have the weather up, but again, uh, one thing that James really wants is that rain up versus that ground. And as you mentioned, Top of Fini using Nature's Madness again. Hitting that Kyogre, or sorry, that Incineroar slot takes 50% damage right there, down to uh, even 100 as Incineroar uses U turn here, hits in that Top of Fini slot, and we'll be able to bring back out that Amoongus. With that Regenerator, we'll heal a little bit back up. Uh, the stack attacker is intimidated, so a Continental Crush uh, will. Probably it's close to calculation. Yeah, I gotta wonder if the Continental Crush at least comes out this turn would do a lot of damage. And there, there it is, is Continental a Crush. Big attack, yeah. Uh, you know, that Z move is really, really strong against James's team. There is nothing on the team that can actually resist it, so any damage is very good. I think Nyota is just trying to distribute damage on Pokemon that aren't Amoongus because Amoongus, of course, can regenerate through its health, uh, its ability, but uh, Kyogre and Incineroar certainly won't be able to. So this does go into like yeah, Kyogre. That's smash into that Kyogre right there. Big damage going to be dealt to this Kyogre. Of course, Stack Attack it is intimidated. How much damage does it do to Kyogre? And that actually did a fair amount of damage right there. Yeah, Amoongus actually did reveal the Grass Knot as well, so that actually will be able to do a considerable amount of damage for uh, into Groudon, should Groudon choose to switch in. Of course, Misty Terrain is also slowly expiring. I think James might be looking for the one pivotal turn where Amoongus is on the field and Misty Terrain has uh, stalled out. So then you can maybe get a spore off if Tapu Fini is out on the field. Of course, if Nyoto kind of predicts this, this is the last turn of Misty Terrain. He might want to switch out that Tapu Fini, stay into Groudon, and then bring it in the following turn. And Kyogre switches out, and Sinora takes the field, another Intimidate going to be activated against this stack attack. So it's attack stat keeps dropping here as now Nyota has to find an opportunity to switch out that top of Fini and does right here for that Groudon. So a fairly safe switch, probably going to sacrifice, you know, one Grass Knot here in order to be able to get up the Desolate Land as well as save that Misty Train for the next turn. Yeah, totally worth it there. And actually not, not even a Grass Knot, so Groudon doesn't really take any damage there at all. So yeah, playing it smart there, maybe uh, James hoping that Nyoto just kind of stays in. There's a Stone Edge there as well. Is Next, that with that Incineroar gets the hit oh. there. And that is a big, big knockout. Now, no longer will be able to pivot as Stag Attack uh, resets its stat attack stat a little bit with that Beast Boost as the Mist finally disappears. Uh, so Kyogre will be able to take the field here. We'll get the rain active with Amoongus able to go for a score, but a couple of switches should put Nyota back into the driver's seat in yeah. terms of position. Exactly. All he needs to do is bring in the top of Fini, set up that Misty Terrain so no spores can come out, and then you will have Groudon and Lunala in the end game against Kyogre and Amoongus. Kyogre at this point should probably fall to oppress his blades, and Amoongus really can't do anything while the terrain is up, especially because the clear small came out that last turn. So, I mean, it really felt like this game was kind of over at the second turn, but Nyoto's actually made really good plays to make sure like he doesn't fall into this kind of this one turn where he gets completely trapped. Uh, he's been playing very smart, making sure like Kyogre doesn't get to come out freely against the Groudon. So gonna switch out that Groudon, gonna reset the terrain here at Top of Fini, and I think this game is just about two or three turns away from ending. Top of Fini switches in, the Misty Surge activates, so now this Amoongus is not gonna be able to do much here as Stack Attack protects itself, doesn't want to get KO'd by that Kyogre yet. So here we go now, just an easy way for Nyota to be able to get that Groudon back in to be in perfect position <laughs> as Top of Fini dodges the attack. Amoongus uses Grass Knot on that Stack Attacker, but Stack Attacker has protected itself.
Yeah, once again, just kind of seeing formalities play out here. I think that it was pretty much the only play James can go for. You can't really click Water Spell because you're not doing much damage. Origin Pulse at least could potentially do uh, some significant damage there for that one turn. But now, all Groudon has to do is come back in, click Press this Blades. Uh, Lunala could even put, provide some support. But once again, I, I think that it's good to try to play it out, especially because your opponent could always make a pivotal mistake. Yeah, and here... Stack attack and switches out. Groudon takes the field again. That decimal lands. That weather war that both these players are uh, facing off against right now. Groudon has the weather control. The misty terrain is up. Kyogre and Amoongus are essentially useless. James does read into that though. He uses Ice Beam here. Hits it in that Tapu Fini slot. Not doing much damage at all as Tapu Fini can tend to just go for it. Nature's Madness as the next turn. Niota should be able to wrap up. Yeah, exactly. Next couple turns. Yep, Presbyte's Blades here at this point should do a lot of damage. I think James uh, hoping to catch the Groudon switching in from the top of Beanie slot, but instead, and then, wow, it doesn't even get the knockout <laughs> there. So uh, kind of a methodical foil there, but James not giving up saying, okay, maybe if I can catch the Groudon on the switch in, and if I am faster with the Kyogre, then maybe Ice Beam, Grass Knot, and another Ice Beam will get the knockout. But because of that switch in, Nyoto here should be able to steal up the game, barring any Presbyte's Blades misses. Kyogre protects itself as Groudon uses Presbyte's Blades, hitting that Kyogre Protect, connects with that Amoongus, and this is going to be information as to how much his Presbyte's Blades will do to the Amoongus, and that is enough to get the KO from that range. Yeah, so it really feels like in both games, one player just kind of had a, a big, big advantage and kind of ran away with it in, the, in this game, obviously, a little bit earlier on, whereas in that first game, James, after he got the Geomancy off, put himself into a very, very good position. So, yeah, I think early game positioning is so pivotal in this set, and James making an adjustment, bringing Tornadus, maybe expecting the Tailwind route from Nyoto. Nyoto doesn't end up going for that, and that turn one was just uh, absolutely detrimental to James there as Nido took such a big lead, one that I think was very difficult to come back from. And uh, the wide guard Lunala reveal is absolutely key, I think. Anytime you use a major attack on Kyogre and it walks into a wide guard, that sets you back so much. And here we are now, getting ready to get into game three between James Beck and Iota Mizu Mizubuchi. This is going to be an intense game three here. It's been a back and forth battle between both of these players. It's all about a battle for board position right now. James has such a strong <laughs> board position. He already knows what he wants to do here, as Nyota had a great lead in terms of board position throughout the entire game two. Nyota now trying to figure out what is going to be happening and what he needs to do to try to maintain that board position. Yeah, for James's end, maybe Cartana is the answer here. He seems quite confident with what he's gone for, but Cartana can, of course, go for a Sacred Sword onto Stack Attack. A Stack Attack does not have something like the Chopo Berry, so four times super effective. Also puts on a lot of pressure against the Tapu Fini with Leaf Blade, so kind of consistent damage across the board. Uh, hits everything on Iota's end, at least for neutral damage, so that might be the adjustment that James makes. I think he probably doesn't risk bringing Tornadus again because they pretty much did nothing for him that last game. Kind of gambling on the roleplay. He's also already revealed roleplay, so certainly Nyoto won't work, walk into that this time around. So uh, Cortana at this time might be the adjustment for James if he wants to switch something up. Yeah, Cortana seems like it'll actually hit a lot of things for super effective damage. Uh, Cortana has access to a lot of moves, including knockoff, which we actually saw in one of the stream matches earlier. So if yeah. Cortana does know that, they can be dealing a lot of damage to so many Pokemon on Nyota's side. Yeah, and uh, you know the tricky thing, of course, about bringing Cortana means you'd have to give up one of Incineroar or Amoongus, unless you feel that confident that like you're not going to bring one of the two restricted Pokemon. That's not something that James is unfamiliar with, though. He's actually done that multiple times throughout the course of the season, so we'll see if Cortana ends up being the adjustment. It's something that I think could be really good, especially to put on pressure against Stack Attack, because a Stack Attack really kind of felt like the MVP in that last match. And here we are now, Aaron, jumping into Game 3. Winner of this game here moves on to the finals of the World Championships. Will it be James Beck or Naoto? Mizobuchi as James leads with Incineroar and Amoongus over on Naoto's side, leads with Groudon and Lunala. Yeah, so Incineroar and Amoongus, uh, you know, the two non restricted on James' team here, whereas uh, Nyoto brings up both restricted Pokemon. Intimidate onto Groudon is always great, but there's a lot of offensive pressure coming out from both Pokemon, obviously, on the opposing side. That being said, uh, there's no way to, if, for example, Incineroar goes for a fake out on a Groudon, Lunala probably, Lunala certainly actually won't be able to knock out Amoongus because of the Focus Sash, so Amoongus is pretty much guaranteed to score. So Nyoto might consider switching out into Tapu Afini immediately to bring up that misty terrain, but of course in doing so, James can maybe predict that, maybe go for a U-turn with his Incineroar. I like the adjustment of uh, Incineroar Amoongus, though. Definitely would punish uh, a lot of options. Oh, no, no, switch out, no all. fake out. Lunala uses Moon Geist Beam here, trying to get some damage out onto the field. 
Probably gonna try to KO this. The movies right here breaks that focus dash that we saw earlier. Oh, a critical, a critical right hit and a fire punch. Oh my, punch. what a read! Trying to just knock out this Amoongus to prevent it from being able to set up oh, a spore. Man. Hey, Aaron, guess what's a better way to prevent spore from happening? Just go for the double target. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm reading into no potential fake out there. I mean, one of the things with Incineroar is it obviously always pressures with fake out. A lot of players, especially at the higher level, just go for the U-turn. And Nyoto making such a nice read there. I don't think the critical hit ended up mattering, of course, because of uh, the sun being up and Groudon being so strong. But uh, yeah, I mean, of, of course, now at least Kyogre is able to come in for free, but losing Amoongus so early on is so, so bad here for James. Kyogre takes the field, will get advantage here in terms of weather with that primordial C here. Uh, now, James also has the option to switch back in that Incineroar for another Intimidate onto that Groudon just to weaken it even more. But, uh, you know, this. Kyogre's pretty content to just knock it out if no weather changes. Yeah, the issue for James here is Lunala still has wide guard, and you obviously can't That's take true, out yeah. Lunala. So Lunala is kind of just content clicking wide guard, using it as a wall. We've seen this, you know, with other Pokemon in this format, I think, like Celesteela, for example, to, in a North American International Championships, just exerts so much pressure through wide guard, uh, protecting Groudon, allowing it to basically switch into a partner for free and then come back in. So that was the perfect turn one there from Nyoto, uh, making, once again, a lights out play right away. Yeah, so James now needs to try to find opportunities to get as much damage dealt as possible as Stack Attacker replaces that Groudon, saving that weather for the back. But again, Lunala can tend to just go for a wide guard here, blocking that Origin Pulse, blocking that Water Spout that this Kyogre is going to go for. And Kyogre goes for it, just uses Water Spout right there straight into that wide guard. Yep preventing any damage there. Incineroar at least gets the U-turn off here, so we'll be able to break the Shadow Shield. We'll allow James to bring in a Pokemon for free, but it's really difficult to be able to win the Weather War when you only have three Pokemon because you're pretty much when you switch out the Kyogre, your, Kyo your opponent knows exactly what is coming in. And Karkana actually did come action. out. So Karkana, <laughs> the adjustment from James Beck that you expected to see, and there it is, can deal a lot of damage to the Stack Attack. It can also deal a lot of damage to this Lunala as well. Yeah, I, I do think that is the Pokemon that James needed to bring to this matchup, so he actually opted not to bring the Xerneas, despite it doing so many favors for him in that first game. And I think had Xerneas been in the Pokemon uh, in the back, it would have been really difficult for James to win this. I mean, he still is down, but I think the Kartana at least certainly gives him more outs. Uh, puts on a lot of pressure against both these Pokemon, of course. You mentioned that Knockoff could potentially use that Knockoff against Lana or go for a big Sacred Sword against Stack Attacka. So, nice adjustment there. Stack Attacka not wanting to take a Sacred Sword there is going to switch out into the Groudon. Stack Attacka switches out. Groudon comes in, advantage weather for Groudon right now with that desolate land. So how is James going to deal with this right here? Groudon can take that Sacred Sword a lot better than that stack attack as Cartana just uses Leaf Blade here. Ooh. Hits into that Lunala slot, doing good damage right there as Kyogre predicting the switch or even expecting a wide guard goes for an Ice Beam, uses it, hits into Lunala as Lunala sets up a Trick Room. Yeah, so Lunala actually not worried about, about a potential knockout from the Kartana. We saw that it was running the Cobra Barrier, allowing it to take pretty much no damage from knockoff. That was a very safe play from Naoto. Unless he gets crit there by either attack, then he'll pretty much guarantee the Trick Room. And now Trick Room is up. It's going to be really, really difficult, I think, for James to be able to win this game. And the key thing is that this Lunala and this Groudon combination is just shut down Kyogre so well. We didn't see Wide Guard until the second game, but Wide Guard just makes it so much more difficult for this Kyogre to get consistent damage off. So really, really nice adjustments. I mean, that turn one play was just so big because now Trick Room is just so much easier to play with on Iota's end. Kartana switches out on James' side, doesn't want to stay in. Incineroar switches in instead, using that Intimidate ability, trying to preserve Pokemon over on James' side of the field. You know, this Groudon won't be hitting as hard under the Trick Room as it would without this Incineroar's ability here, as Groudon not being a speed Pokemon underspeeds that Kyogre Ky Ky over on the other side of the field. Connects with a Presbyte Blades. Big damage onto that Incineroar. Big damage onto that Kyogre as well, as Incineroar is in range to eat at its berry. Yeah, Presbyte Blades, definitely the best damage there. Uh, you know, you don't want to risk Fire Punching, especially when you know there is an Incineroar in the back. Another Moon Guys team here coming out as well. And once again, this Kyogre can't do anything but click Ice Beam. James is kind of in a tricky position where obviously he wants to switch out the Kyogre, but uh, the Cortana would probably just faint to a Presbyte Blades and a Moon Guys team. So trying to go for the knockout into Lunala. I'm not sure that's even going to be enough. Big damage in Lunala yeah. hangs on against <laughs> the sliver of hit points. And, you know, this does give James the ability to switch out that Kyogre to preserve it for later, but is it too late? Is the board position just so heavily in favor of Nyota's side right now? Yeah, I mean, Kartana is pretty much one of the last Pokemon you want to have up against a Trick Room team. So, uh, yeah, you can switch out the uh, 
the Kyogre into Kartana, but I just really think it's going to be difficult for James to win this because he's going to have to spell out multiple turns of Trick Room, and to be honest, I think Nyota might actually even be able to set up another turn of Trick Room, so let's see what James goes for here. Protecting the Kyogre, if Incineroar goes down here, it might just be game, but nice play to kind of pivot out, make sure that he still has three Pokemon remaining. Uh, Kartana here most definitely will take a press this blade. Yeah, and Kartana can actually take that press this blade. It does have a pretty good physical defense stat, yep. and uh, Kartana is forced to come in right here against this Groudon. Uh, does not want to take a fire punch though, uh, but yeah, Groudon uses presses blades here, hits in that Kyogre Protect, and Kartana's not going to mind this. It will be able to take it for sure. Spread damage, presses blades into Kartana, does about 40%. Yeah, still some pretty solid damage for sure. Trick Room, of course, is counting down Kyogre in a really awkward spot now where it pretty much definitely wants to switch out, but uh, that kind of leaves the window open for Kartana to just... Uh, and yeah, I think James is thinking, okay, since I kind of feel like I have to switch out the Kyogre, maybe I just bait out the Fire Punch into the Incineroar slot instead. The downside is that, yeah, you get the Intimidate off here, but the Kyogre is still out in the sun, so it can't really do anything other than click Ice Beam. And of course, that Kataka does still have access to... Oh, no double, oh, no double protect, protect from that protect, Kyogre, yeah. as here comes a Continental Crush from the Stack Attacka, trying to get a KO here. Whether it lands in that Kyogre, whether it lands in that Incineroar, that's going to be a KO, and it's going to come down to James's last two Pokemon, so Nyota is so close to becoming a final tier at the World Championships with this stack attack going for this Continental Crush. Yeah, who is it going into? That Kyogre. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a KO. Wow. Is it enough? Yeah, for sure. sure. <laughs> it just got smacked with a big piece of rock air, and of course that's a knockout. As stack attack gets another beast boost here, another attack boost, as Groudon uses Fire Punch into that Incineroar slot, not going to do too much damage because of that Intimidate and that Resist, but here comes Kartana. Yeah, covering every option there. If, uh, you know, Kyogre had, because that had protected already, means that you can pretty much guarantee uh, target into that slot unless the double protect happens. Even if the double protect happened, it's like you still have Incineroar and Kyogre out in the sun. So I, I just feel like losing Amoongus was so bad here. And it felt like all these games were kind of decided by the third or fourth turn. Uh, Nyoto really great assessment of realizing Amoongus counters my Trick Room so hard, prioritizing it so early on. James made a really risky play in the first of this game, not going for the fake out, not going for the score, and uh, gets punished very heavily by just losing Amoongus. Maybe that critical hit mattered depending on how the uh, Amoongus is trained uh, defensively and how much attack investment the Groudon has, but after that first turn, losing Amoongus meant that it was going to be a huge uphill battle here for James. And here we, are now, here we are now coming into the final turns of this match. Stack Attacka uses Protect not wanting to take a possible Sacred Sword and maybe just allowing Groudon to just go for a Fire Punch, but instead Groudon protects itself here as well as Incineroar uses his turn to go for a Fake Out, so really just trying to burn out that Fake Out pressure right there as Kartana uses Sacred Sword into that Stack Attacka. Yeah, the main issue for James is it's obviously four on two right now, and Kartana being a relatively frail Pokemon will faint obviously to a Fire Punch. Not even sure a critical hit Leaf Blade will knock out that Groudon. So Groudon kind of just needs to click Fire Punch onto Kartana and stack attack of maybe even decides to stay in here. Yep, and uh, here yeah, comes Kartana's Sacred, Sacred Sword. Sword. Lands into that stack attack slot, does good damage right there. Oh. Doesn't even get the KO as you thought it would here, Aaron. As Groudon uses Fire Punch here, connects with that Kartana, gets the KO. Incineroar gets to move here, will be able to knock out that stack attack with a Flare Blitz. So one threat is down, but it's now Incineroar versus the entire rest of Nyota's team, that Lunala and a Pokemon hiding in the back. Of course, Groudon, easy moves right here. Just go for a Presser's Blade to finish it off, and Nyota is going to be moving on. Yeah, he's got to be able to, to taste that World Finals that he missed out in 2015. Of course, top four of the World Championships in 2015, and now about to make it to the Finals. Such incredible play here after what looked like a really, really rough first game. Moon Guys Beam is coming yep. out. All he needs Here's to the do Moon is Guys to beam. press this place, and he will move on to the finals here at the World Championship. Here's the Moon Guys Beam. Just some chip damage onto that Incineroar. And here comes Groudon <laughs> with a sun boosted fire punch into that Incineroar. Does damage. Incineroar hangs on. Here comes Incineroar's Flare Blitz, though. Boosted by that sunlight, hits that Lunala, gets the KO, and now Nyota has to reveal his fourth Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, of course, opting for the Fire Punch doesn't want to risk the Press Display Smith, hoping for a little bit more of a dramatic finish, but doesn't really <laughs> end up making the difference. Any Pokemon basically could have sealed this up for Nyota. He had such a big lead, so yeah. Top Playing of Fini now. Top of Fini takes the field here, and again, as you said, this here is just formalities as Incineroar, the last Pokemon, James Tide, heavily damaged 
if it wanted to KO Groudon or Top King, it just knocked itself out from recoil anyways. <laughs> as here comes Groudon's Fire Punch, and Nyota Mizoguchi is one of your world's finalists. Congratulations to Nyoto. He played so 